Okay, we are back uh, for the last presentation of uh, this morning session. Uh, we are going to have Gakumin Kato, Majuratsu, and Epa Utavajimana in a minute. So um, today's talk will be titled UN OpenGIS Initiative, Use Cases of Open Mobile GIS Solutions in the Context of UN Peace Operations. Uh, our presenter is Gakumin Kato, is an Associate Geospatial Information Officer uh, of Geospatial Information Section uh, in UN Secretariat in New York, and he has a Bachelor's of Engineering, Master's of International Studies, and GIS. He's from Japan, and his recent hobbies include cooking and going out with a 17-month-old daughter on the weekend. Uh, Majura Chiu is from South Sudan. He's been working in the UN system for about four years, providing GIS services. Uh, he joined the UN family at UN MIS and currently serves as GIS, special, GIS specialist at UNDP. Um, he has a Bachelor of Science in Geology and Master of GIS, both acquired in Canada. Uh, he hikes, jogs, and plays soccer. And Epa uh, is from Rwanda. He has a Master's degree in Geoinformatics uh, and an MBA. And his GIS career started with UNDP Rwanda, and then he joined UN Peacekeeping Mission in 2003. Worked in different countries, including Sierra Leone, Ivory Coast, Chad, Haiti, South Sudan, and now he's in DRC. Uh, he reads and writes, and he has four unpublished and one published book. Uh, so um, it's quite interesting, and, and, and uh, it's, it's, it's a quite interesting and great hobby. So uh, I'm not talking uh, anymore, so I just leave the screen to you and the presentation, so welcome, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the great introductions. So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm, I'm, then I put it as a full screen mode. I hope you can see it. Yeah. So I hope you can see it. So, so let's get me. Uh, let's get started. <clears throat> uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all, and welcome to our talk. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, my name is Gakumin Kato, and I'm working for the United Nations uh, Geospatial Information Section. And today we will be talking about our activities related to the open source uh, mobile GI solutions under the UN Open GI Initiative framework and hopefully we can share our experience and views as a user of the force 40 tools and importantly uh, we to welcome any feedback and suggestions from the from this great force 40 community so UN OpenGIS initiative was established in 2016 with the aim to identify and develop open source uh, GS bundle that meets the requirements of the United Nations taking full advantage of the experience of their partners. And currently, uh, more than 60 uh, uh, organizations uh, participated in this initiative, including fund and program and agencies of the United Nations, uh, UN systems, and academia and private sectors and the member states and more. And UN uh, OpenGIS initiative has uh, six working groups uh, due to time constraints, I cannot explain all, but uh, activities on mobile uh, uh, GIS applications is included in the working group one, uh, which is a hybrid GIS uh, architecture. And then I assume that uh, for uh, some of you may feel that what is the hybrid GIS? And actually, there was a specific talk about the hybrid GIS in this morning, and then I believe it just uh, finished. So for those who have missed this, the, this the talk, the hybrid GIS is an architecture that UN Open GIS initiative is, is aimed for. And this architecture uses both proprietary and open source technologies to complement each other to support a, a variety of needs in the context of the peace operation. And uh, mobile GIS uh, is one of the layers of the hybrid GIS uh, architecture. Uh, this is because study for the UN field missions uh, operations. 
And we believe that the open source mobile GI solutions can help us and support our operational needs. And uh, as a main activity for the mobile GI solutions, we have initiated a pilot project since 2020. The project aimed to evaluate the effectiveness of using the open source mobile solutions uh, in the field data collection and set up the fundamental process for integration, implementation, and the use of the GS mobile applications under UN OpenGIS architecture. And uh, test the mobile solutions compatibility with the known open source systems such as desktop, QGIS, uh, servers, your servers, and database, Postgres, PostGIS, etc. So this was the main uh, objective of the pilot project. And we attended the FOSS 40 2019 in Bucharest, and we have met many people and developers, and we have researched it and identified some of the very nice, uh, great tools, open source uh, mobile GIS solutions. And uh, finally, this project uh, decided to focus on uh, uh, some tools such as the uh, QField, <coughs> Cobo Collect, and GeoPaparazzi, and uh, Smash. But it doesn't mean that there are no other open source tools, but you know, due to the resource, uh, the limitation of the resources, uh, we have decided to focus on these uh, three tools. And as a project members, uh, MS, uh, Unifield Mission in South Sudan, uh, in charge of the testing of QField and Cobolet. And the MONUSCO, uh, the Unified Mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, uh, evaluated the geopaparazzi and the smash. And also, World Food Program uh, contributed a lot to develop the evaluation framework uh, for this project. And in Poland, we, we have uh, very uh, kind and, and substantive uh, support from the developers, such as OpenGIS Associates, developer of the QField and the Hydro GIS, a developer of GeoParazzi and Smash. So I'd like to take this opportunity to appreciate their kind of support for this project. Okay, then I'd like to uh, uh, invite my colleague, Major of the UNDP, who uh, uh, he is now working for the United Nations, uh, UNDP. However, he used to work for the UNMIS and then he was a main GIS officer to conduct the testing of the QField and Combo Collect, uh, Collect in UMIS at that time. So uh, uh, I think uh, I'd like to uh, hand it over to Majo. Majo, over to you, Majo. Just a brief uh, uh, um, I think Majo is having connection problems. Uh, if he doesn't connect back, okay. uh, Maybe uh, are you able to continue the presentation, Akumi? Oh, okay. So unfortunately, Majo cannot <laughs> has a technical issues. So I I think on, on his behalf I can uh, continue the presentation from my end. Okay. So uh, so uh, for this one, uh, 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 as on the testing of the Q field. So we started from the Q field. So this is the basic workflow of the Q field. Uh, as you may know, uh, Q field is uh, a, you know mobile type of the QGIS. So everything will start from the QGIS uh, desktop. 
So the create a project, the configure project, and the package project, and the transfer project to the mobile devices. And then, and then uh, interviewed, you download the projects, edit the project, and save edits. And then uh, once uh, the field data collection is done, uh, it's, uh, uh, we, take, we took everything back to the QGIS desktop uh, and the transfer uh, projects and sync projects, edit projects, and connect to the database. So, and then we, we have been using the database posts for our uh, testing. And in terms of the use cases in the queue field, uh, of the queue field, I think Maju uh, put the, some example of the UNDP. <clears throat> so in the country office, uh, there was uh, activities for disaster response. So for example, Beirut explosion, it was used and the community crowdsourcing, the thing, America COVID response, that was the, the main uh, sort of use cases and the crisis response project and monitor link, ground to uh, do things. So these are the main sort of the use, <laughs> use cases of, for the United uh, UNDP. And for the UMIS uh, use cases, uh, we have been using for this one, uh, camp facility mapping, patrol routes mapping, ceasefire monitoring, civil, engage, civil uh, engagement. So these are the main uh, use cases. Our uh, experience, user experiences. So uh, there are a lot of benefits of the using the Q field in our field. <clears throat> OIBUS this is uh, free of charge in terms of the license. So this is uh, scalable. Uh, it doesn't limit to our usage based on the license numbers. <clears throat> that is really, uh, I think, the, the major sort of the advantage. And it has a nice offline capabilities, as you may know, and easy integration with the QGIS and other GS tools. And the direct database editing is possible and easy to download and install in the devices. And then in terms of the OS, Android, Android is available. And I believe the iOS and the Windows uh, version is already released or it, it will be, uh, I think, they're coming soon, according to the presentation yesterday. And very uh, user-friendly interface, and then the simple forms, and the map centric. So these are the Q field, uh, the benefits of the Q field. And some challenges. <clears throat> At that time when we uh, tested, uh, uh, only Android was available. And, uh, and then there are a lot of users of the iOS and other OS. So that was uh, some uh, challenges. And also the organization, the ICT security policies. So if you'd like to have a <clears throat> sort of the uh, backend database in our uh, UN ICT <clears throat> infrastructure, we have to follow the uh, specific security rules. And, and they also, in some cases, applications has to follow the, uh, you know, the security policies. That's uh, one uh, challenge in order to operationalize the use of these uh, tools. And I think uh, it's already there. So I think we have, uh, okay, then uh, uh, what else? I, I think in terms of the challenges, we can stop here. And then the <clears throat> recommendations, and, uh, and then we believe that QField uh, is a great choice for the GIS field data collections. And then we uh, we we proved that this is uh, effective for our uh, daily operations uh, based on this pilot project. And and then and QField should be enlisted in the UN approved the first 4G list. Now, actually, QField is one, it's already uh, listed and listed in one of the standardized uh, mobile GIS tools in the United uh, Nations. So, oh, uh, so oh, yeah. And then uh, for non GIS professionals, we need more uh, continuous uh, trainings uh, uh, because, you know, we need you uh, for the beginners or for non GIS professionals. Uh, you need to know how to use QGIS, 
and you need to know the basics of the GIS. So training is necessary. And, and then what else? So we'd like to uh, encourage field staff uh, to utilize this app uh, applications for field uh, mapping and data collection, etc. So this is the for the uh, Q field, and I would like to move on to the Copo Collect uh, use cases and Ummis. So Ummis was also in charge of the uh, testing of the Copo Collect. And the Cobalt Collector was selected for this project because the Cobalt Collector is a sort of the form centric uh, solution, uh, a little bit different flavor from the Q field or other uh, smart energy of apparatus. And so uh, we decided to uh, uh, test it and then confirm whether this is effective for our sort of the operations. And so this is the basic workflow. I don't know uh, uh, you are familiar with uh, this the Cobo Collect and the Cobo Toolbox, but uh, Cobo Collect started from the Cobo Toolbox, which is the sort of the web uh, web web applications, or and this is necessary for the Cobo Collect. So and. Uh, so we, uh, you need to design a form online in the Cobalt Toolbox and then uh, uh, push it to the Cobalt Collect and the collect the data with collect the applications. <clears throat> and then uh, after the uh, field data collections, we process data. And then, and then I think uh, uh, in our cases, we, would like, we wanted to put the uh, collected feed data to the QGIS environment and also the positive database environment. So we use some, uh, I think the plugins to visualize the collected data to the postis, uh, uh, I think Q to QGIS and the postis. And then once the database, uh, once the field data, uh, field collected data, it's uh, Post it uh, stored in the postis, and you can share it in our in the UN and at uh, etc. So this is the main uh, sort of the frame uh, feed uh, workflows. So the the benefits, recommendation, and feedbacks uh, due to time constraints, I cannot explain all. But the, we we really found that this is a, a sort of a very powerful tools. Uh, in our for our operations, and then we would like to uh, uh, somehow you know you know the operationalize the use of these uh, uh, tools in the in the coming weeks and then months. So that is the uh, uh, that is the for the Cobo Collect. Sorry, uh, due to solutions. Uh, so, so here uh, now I'd like to invite the, my another colleague, Eva of uh, Monusco, who is the main, uh, who is the GIS officer in Monusco, and who have conducted the uh, the, the testing of the smart energy paparazzi in Monusco. I hope that Eva can uh, connect and join. Eva, over to you. Yes, uh, Gakumin, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, greetings to uh, the entire audience. Uh, I hope I'm audible to everyone. My name is Epa Utabajimana. As I said, I am a GIS officer and um, I lead a small team here. Uh, I'm presently in the eastern part of DRC. Just a second, uh, a flight aircraft is passing. Sorry, we are on the path of, uh, you know, aircraft uh, taking off and uh, landing. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, I was saying that I am uh, presently in a DRC eastern part in a city called uh, Goma. So I'm happy to be uh, part of this uh, 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 meeting. And uh, as Gakumin mentioned, uh, uh, we are one of the field mission 
that was uh, tasked to test two um, open source uh, GIS tools for data collection. And uh, we tested the GeoParazzi and uh, Smash. And um, of course, as uh, Gakumin mentioned, uh, we'd like to, to thank particularly the uh, developer. Uh, they've been with us all along. We had never used these tools. Uh, and as we were trying to, to test them, we had a, a number of technical issues and uh, they really supported. So um, the use cases according to the mission requirements that we chose um, uh, 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 were three. But as now we are moving to the implementation of the one of the tools, which is Smash, uh, uh, there is a, a fourth one that is coming. So uh, number one was about uh, the UN staff residences information collection, uh, uh, which would be of great, you know, use to uh, clients such as uh, uh, UN uh, uh, security uh who need to have this uh kind of information and also use them uh in case uh of for example emergency they would need to know where each un staff is residing and how uh they can uh, easily uh get to uh to them uh in in case of need so this kind of information was, was uh you know important to 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 be considered as a use case for our testing uh, phase. And also the mapping of POIs, um, for example, clients from uh, different uh, sections or departments within our organization, like uh, procurement, engineering, uh, conduct and discipline, the military and the police, they would want to have information on a point of uh, interest, such as, uh, the UN uh, premises located in different locations, uh, such as uh, um, um, leased uh, properties, and uh, also um, uh, leased properties for engineering and procurement, and then uh, 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 some of the restricted uh areas for uh, conduct and discipline unit and also some other uh, uh point of interest for uh, military and police operations um the third use case was the utilities and uh, devices mapping uh where engineering would need to know uh, uh where uh, uh utilities such as uh, uh you know uh power lines or, or water water uh, water pipes are passing uh, uh, these are the information that were uh, that were needed by the the clients the reason why we we chose uh, these use cases and uh, and uh, and uh, the fourth one coming in the next uh, phase of implementation is uh, the position of force patrol teams so uh, that one we are yet to explore it Next slide, please. And uh, during the testing uh, phase, uh, this is uh, our workflow. Um, the, we needed to ensure that uh, the mobile devices are able to connect to um, uh, a server uh, in the cloud and synchronize uh, the, uh, the data with, uh, with the, uh, the database uh, on the, uh, the server in the cloud and also be able to work uh, offline or online depending on the, the situation. And uh, while uh, we have, you know, the a database collected and stored in the cloud uh, we need to ensure that we will be able to to uh, uh, to consume this data in terms of updating our uh, our existing geo products 
and uh, services, either online or uh, offline. So uh, that is uh, how the workflow uh, is, uh, I mean, was uh, during the testing uh, environment, but also uh, even in an implementation uh, environment, I mean, implementation uh, phase, uh, this workflow will continue to be useful. Uh, I have to also mention that uh, uh, during the test, because of some of, of uh, ICT security restrictions, as uh, Gakumin mentioned, within the organization, we were not able to uh, to test the, uh, the, these, uh, these tools through, uh, I mean, uh, in the UN uh, uh, environment. So we had to use uh, outside uh, uh, UN cloud environment, uh, which is uh, Amazon EC2 infrastructure. So that is what we used. But during the implementation, uh, we have come up with, uh, you know, uh, uh, recommendations and we, we got approval to have uh, an infrastructure set up uh, within uh, the UN cloud environment. Yeah, uh, next slide. Yeah, mm, so currently um, we are at the implementation, uh, you know, phase uh, or operationalization phase where we adopted uh, the use of Smash instead of Geopaparazzi because of a number of reasons, uh, for example, uh, geoparazzi was found to be only uh, used under uh, one OS, uh, while uh, Smash was uh, both working under um, uh, Android and uh, and uh, iOS. So we uh, we adopted Smash, and uh, this is what we are trying to implement. The our cloud infrastructure has the uh, same concept, which would be able to to connect to the uh, to the server in the the cloud, and um, uh, uh, download some base data and synchronize with the, with the database uh, in the server, and uh, also be able to work uh, 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 offline or online. And uh, once the data is uh, the data is collected and uh, validated, and uh, it can be uh, consumed through uh, through uh, our uh, geoproducts, maps, and uh, uh, applications that we are uh, our client uh, variant clients are using uh, here in the field. So uh, we are currently at uh, the stage where uh, a, a centralized uh, uh, geoparazzi survey server is, you know, uh, infrastructure is being set up. And um, we have so far uh, developed user guides uh, um, and trained uh, uh, trainers, trainers are, are, uh, are the colleagues who are part of the GIS team here, but are deployed in a different uh, 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 sector offices and who will be also required to now uh, target some potential users from various departments to train them and use them as we are um, trying to involve a wider user community uh, in terms of uh, data collection, especially that this is a, an open source tool that does not require uh, any, uh, any licensing. So we believe that uh, the uh, community uh, uh, will be widened and will be able to uh, benefit from uh, their contribution. Uh, I must say here in the Congo, Congo DRC, for some of you who might not know, it's a, a big country, same size as Europe, and uh, as a GIS team, it's not easy for, you know, like a 20, uh, less than a 20 
staff to be able to go here and there, collect the data. So by involving a big user uh, community, we, uh, um, we, we, we believe that we will benefit much in, in, in getting uh, more data and also improving our product and services to, to the client. So the next step after having decentralized the server, we will uh, now engage in, 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 in that training of a wider user community and uh, make sure that the, the tool is uh, used nationwide. So that is uh, the plan and uh, uh, this marks the end of uh, my presentation. Over to you, Gakumi. Okay, thank you very much, Epa. I think we are running out of time, so I would like to wrap up our presentation quickly. So, so, uh, uh, so the four planned activities. So uh, we we uh, infrastructure in the UN uh, premises, and because when we deal with you know confidential data, it is important to have a database in the UN you know, sort of the premises. And also uh, whenever we have a client and if, and then if we have, a, you know, the global GIS, mobile GIS infrastructure ready, and we can uh, uh, let them use the mobile backend server and services uh, as soon as possible. So this is the, the first point. And the next point is to form a, a sort of the small in, uh, interest group to focusing on specific pilot use cases and technical explorations. So for example, Monosco has been uh, continuously uh, pushing uh, to operationalize the use of the Smash. And then they are trying to implement uh, the mobile GS infrastructure such as Geo, uh, uh, Geo Party server in the UN. And that's a good, uh, good example and a good case. Uh, however, uh, We'd like to push the, you know, the use of the field and Cobo Collect, and then we, we are uh, looking forward to the more opportunities uh, uh, to operationalize other uh, tools as well. So with this, uh, I'd like to conclude my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for joining, and then my apologies for the technical uh, issues. Uh, I hope uh, you, you still enjoyed the presentation. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, uh, thank you, Gakumin Apa Majur for the uh, for the for the presentation. Um, we have run out of time, and I'm going to uh, kindly request you to look at the questions on venue list and 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 uh, answer the questions there. And uh, for the audience, if you want uh, if you, if you want any questions, if you have any questions, please reach out to Gakumin Apa Majur through uh, venue list for the questions. Uh, before wrapping up, I want to give uh, I want to give Majur to have an opportunity to talk and have any additional comments if he has because he has lost connection and came back. So if you have any additional comments, Majur, please uh, you can share them now. Uh, uh, th thank you, Ken. I don't know if you can hear me now. Um, I, I apologize for the if there is any question we are open. You can leave the questions out which can share with us. We can answer you as possible as much as we can. Thank you. Robert. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for your understanding for uh, having four or five minutes extending extending session for five minutes. Um, thank you for all the presenters. Thank you for the presenters that were participating in that session. Um, hope to meet you and talk to you on many of this uh, more in the coming days. Uh, for now, we have a keynote speech uh, at Malena Liebman uh, channel. So uh, I invite all of the participants uh, to attend the keynote speech now uh, before the lunch break. So thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for thanks for your contributions and have a nice day. Have a nice rest of the conference. Nice meeting you all.